in this video we will find the moment of inertia of a rod we will find the moment of inertia of a rod suppose i take a rod say this is the rod say rod is having the length l and we want to find moment of inertia about say uh, about the axis about an axis which is passing through the midpoint of the rod say this we want to find moment of inertia about an axis which is passing through the midpoint of the rod okay so rod is having mass m and this is mass uniformly distributed of mass m and having length l i assume that mass is uniformly distributed mass is uniformly distributed right so we want to find moment of inertia of this rod about this line about this axis right see we know that uh, the moment of inertia of any point mass is given by moment of inertia of any point mass about a given axis is given by mr square like this is the axis and suppose this is the um, point mass say this is the point mass and distance is r then moment of inertia about this axis is given by this is mass m is given by mr square right so we can assume this rod to be made up of element we can assume this rod to be made up of this kind of element say this element is having mass dm and say this is lying at a distance of say r and uh, suppose uh, the thickness is dr this is your dr all right so we have an element of the rod of uh, length dr lying at a distance of r so the mass of this element is what m by l that's a mass per unit length into dr and we can consider this element as a point mass then the moment of inertia of this dm would be given by r square dm or dm into r square right that's the moment of inertia of this element this element so if i want moment of inertia of the whole rod about this axis then i will do this r square dm and let's put the value of dm dm is m upon l dr and see this is reference for measuring r so this axis is taken r equal to 0 so limit of r goes from r equal to 0 to l by 2 and minus l by 2 to 0 so limit of r if this side is taken as positive this side of axis will be taken as negative so limit of uh, r goes from minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 this is minus l by 2 to plus l by 2 and uh, this will be how much this will be m by l r cube by 3 minus l by 2 2 plus l by 2 so this is m upon 3 l and this is l cube by sorry this will be what l cube by 8 right and we have to multiply 2 also because we put the lower limit then also or you can do it also minus so that will be ml square by 12 so moment of inertia of the rod about this axis is ml square by 12 moment of inertia of this rod about this axis is ml square by 12 so that's the moment of inertia of the rod about the perpendicular bisector about the perpendicular bisector right if you want moment of inertia of the rod about this axis then you can use parallel axis theorem and what does parallel axis theorem says this is the center of mass this is the center of mass so you want uh, this that's the 
So your moment of inertia about an axis passing through center of mass is ICM is ML square by So moment of inertia about this axis is going to be what? That's going to be ICM plus MD square and this D is what? L by 2. So this is ML square by 12 and D is L by 2, ML square by 4 and that comes out to be ML square by 3. Alright? That is ML square by 3. So that's the moment of inertia of the rod about perpendicular bisector and once we find moment of inertia of the rod about perpendicular bisector you can find moment of inertia of the rod about any axis by using this uh, uh, parallel axis theorem all right okay let's go to other case let's find moment of inertia of moment of inertia of a rectangular lamina you know rectangular lamina rectangular plate better you should understand rectangular plate this is rectangular plate right this is rectangular plate suppose this is A and this is B suppose that rectangular plate is having mass m and again I will assume that mass is uniformly distributed right and suppose we want to find moment of inertia say about this axis this axis is parallel to the edge and passing through mid right this axis this distance is a by 2 and this distance is A by 2 right. okay we want moment of inertia we want moment of inertia of this rectangular plate it's not rectangular loop it's rectangular plate about this axis okay so again what I can do is I can consider this plate to be made up of these kind of rods these elements I can consider the plate to be made up of these kind of elements so I take this element the element consists of a rod kind of thing element is in the form of rod of uh, length B and uh, it's lying at a distance of say x and the uh, thickness is dx see every point in this rod is lying at same distance from the axis every point on this rod is lying at same distance from the axis suppose the mass of this element is dm then moment of inertia of this uh, element about this axis is going to be how much x square dm each and every point of this rod is at the same distance from the axis so I can say this is moment of inertia about this axis right and what's dm dm is going to be m upon was the length a into dx m upon a into dx so if I want i then this will be m a x square dx and x again goes from this is a reference for measuring x so this is x equal to 0 so x goes from minus a by 2 to plus a by 2 and the answer will be m a q by sorry not a m a q a m a square upon 12 this a m a square by 12 all right so the moment of inertia of this lamina about this axis is a m a square by 12 
it looks as if it is a kind of rod of length a similarly the moment of inertia of this rectangular plate about this axis this is b by 2 and this is b by 2 so moment of inertia about this axis say call it x and y so i y is m a square by 12 and i x will be we will follow same procedure that will be m b square by 12 m b square by 12 right and if somebody want moment of inertia about z axis then how what will you do you will use perpendicular axis theorem i z is i x plus i y so m by 12 a square plus b square m by 12 a square plus b square that is i z that is i z all right that's i z so once you get i x and i y you can find i i z using perpendicular axis theorem Get your point? Yes. So this is about rectangular lamina. We can find moment of inertia of a ring. If you wish, you can find moment of inertia of a ring. That's too easy. If I take a ring, if I take a ring like this, then uh, moment of inertia of the ring about an axis passing through center of the ring about an axis passing through center say this and radius is say r and mass of ring is m now see every part of the ring if i take dm element then every particle on the ring is at the same distance from this axis so your di is going to be dmr square and i is going to be simply r square dm and for every element on the ring this is constant so that can be taken outside and the moment of inertia of the ring is mr square moment of inertia of the ring is mr square if you find find moment of inertia of the ring about this axis, then you can use simply parallel axis theorem. You can use parallel axis theorem, right? This is ICM, JMR square, and you want to use this, so that will be ICM plus MD square. See MR square plus. This is twice m r square. This is r twice of m r square. If you want moment of inertia of the ring about uh, diameter, suppose someone wants moment of inertia about this diameter or about this diameter. So this is diameter, I am taking the x-axis, y-axis, this is z-axis. Then from perpendicular axis theorem, see x-axis, y-axis lie along diameter. Then from perpendicular axis we have this and iz we have already found. And the mass distribution of the ring about x-axis and about y-axis is same. So moment of inertia will be equal. And that would be iz by 2. Since mass distribution about x axis and y axis is same so they will be equal and then from this this will be equal to iz by 2 and this is equal to mr square by 2 that is the moment of inertia about the diameter right so this is the moment of inertia of a ring about an axis passing through center and perpendicular to the plane of loop plane of the ring right so this is all about ring this is all about ring we can find moment of inertia about disk let's find moment of inertia of a disk say this is disk and uh, we want moment of inertia about say this axis right 
right? This is the axis. Disk has a mass is distributed throughout the plane. In the ring, mass is distributed only on the circumference. Disk mass is distributed throughout the plane, right? So you want a moment of inertia of this disk. Suppose disk is having mass m and radius r. Suppose disk is having mass m and radius r. All right. Now. I can see this disk. I have the moment of inertia of a ring. So I can visualize this disk as consisting of I can visualize the disk as consisting of an element in the form of ring. I can visualize this disk as consisting of the element in the form of a ring say I can take a ring of radius r and thickness dr I can take a ring of radius r and thickness dr so what would be the mass of this ring it would be m upon if mass is uniformly distributed m upon pi r square is the surface mass density and what's the area of this ring we have a ring of radius r and thickness dr so area of this ring is 2 pi r dr right so this is m upon r square dr and this is a ring so moment of inertia about this axis is going to be what that is going to be r square dm that's moment of inertia dm m r square so dm into r square so this is what r square 2 m r by capital r square dr or you have 2 m by r square r cube dr r cube dr so moment of inertia i is integral of di so this is 2m into so this is and r goes from g to capital r that comes out to be this is r4 by 4 this is mr square by 2 the one of inertia is mr square by 2 and you want one of inertia over this axis you can use parallel axis theorem that is icm plus mr square 3 by 2 mr square you want one of inertia about the diameter you can do it accordingly as we have done in case of ring you will use a perpendicular axis theorem right you will use perpendicular axis theorem ix plus iy is iz and iz is your mr square by 2 so ix plus iy is iz that is mr square by 2 and ix and iy are same since the mass distribution about x axis and y axis both are same so ix equals to iy equals to mr square by 4 use the perpendicular axis theorem if you want moment of inertia about x axis and y axis so this is how we can do this is how we can find moment of inertia of a disk right similarly you can find moment of inertia of a uh, cylinder also both hollow cylinder and both hollow cylinder and uh, um, uh, solid cylinder that will be see hollow cylinder is same as ring see it hardly matters if I make this a cylinder cylinder will be what will be of this kind this is solid cylinder so moment of inertia of a disc and moment of inertia of a solid cylinder would be same Getting a point. This is cylinder. Right. Now instead of taking ring as the element, you will take cylindrical shell as the element. You will take cylindrical shell as the element. Like this. You will take cylindrical shell as the element. Sorry. 
this kind of element it won't be different I understand and uh, this will be cylindrical shell and suppose the length is L so uh, if I uh, see the cylindrical shell of radius R and thickness DR and length L mass would be what DM would be DM for this uh, cylindrical shell is going to be M upon pi r square L pi r square L is volume and uh, what is the volume of the cylindrical shell area is 2 pi r dr into L so this will be 2 m r pi pi will cancel out by r square dr right and uh, uh, each and every point on the cylindrical shell is lying at equal distance from the axis so your uh, di is going to be r square dm so i is going to be integral of this right and if you integrate you will get this only m r square by 2 so cylindrical shell sorry cylinder solid cylinder and disc moment of inertia is going to be same similarly in case of uh, ring and hollow cylinder moment of inertia is going to be same in case of hollow cylinder you see each and every point of the um, uh, cylinder is lying at same distance so the moment of inertia is mr square only for hollow cylinder for hollow cylinder moment of inertia is mr square only right okay now two cases are left one is spherical shell and the other is solid sphere they are famous cases i am only discussing famous cases now let's find moment of inertia of a spherical shell let's take a spherical shell and find moment of inertia of spherical shell we are taking spherical shell of mass m and radius r spherical shell of mass m and radius r and say i want the moment of inertia about this axis what a diameter radius is r radius is r all right mass is m so see i can visualize this spherical shell this is radius r i can visualize this spherical shell as made up of rings i can consider element of the spherical shell made up of these kind of rings right this is the ring say this is your angle theta and this is d theta and this would be r d theta so thickness of the ring is r d theta and the radius of the ring would be r sin theta r sin theta so moment of inertia of this ring is how much we know the moment of inertia of ring it is m into radius of ring square so that would be r square dm what is r small r is r sin theta basically and what's dm dm is going to be m upon what's the surface area surface area is 4 pi r square the same is distributed uniformly on the surface area and what's the surface area of this ring surface area of the ring is the circumference is 2 pi r sin theta right and thickness is rd theta so that's the surface area so r square r square will cancel out this will be 2 so now it is m by 2 m by 2 sin theta d theta I hope you understand 
so dm is m by 2 sin theta d theta so this is going to give us m r square by 2 sin cube theta and moment of inertia is going to be integral of this di so this is m r square by 2 sin square theta d theta all right is sin cube theta d theta and uh, theta goes from the first ring will be this theta equal to 0 and the last ring will be at theta equal to pi theta will go from 0 to pi 0 to pi and uh, we can integrate this sin cube theta is 1 minus cos square theta right and uh, this is nothing but m r square by 2 see if I take cos theta as t then minus sin d theta is dt so that would be minus of 1 minus t square dt right and when theta is 0 cos theta is 1 and when theta is pi cos theta is minus 1 so if I suffer the limit this minus sign will be absorbed it will be this is an even function or you can write it here like t minus t cube by 3 and then it is minus 1 to plus 1 so it will give you what 2 by 3 4 by 3 and again 2 by 3 2 by 3 mr square that's the moment of inertia that's the moment of inertia of the uh, spherical shell that's the moment of inertia of spherical shell about the diameter about the diameter now we can use this result and find out moment of inertia of a solid sphere you can use this uh, result and find moment of inertia of a solid sphere solid sphere means mass is distributed in the bulk also mass is distributed in the bulk also so this is a uh, solid sphere mass is distributed over the whole volume so the solid sphere can be seen as made up of spherical shell so I can take element of the solid sphere of radius r and thickness dr of radius r and thickness dr alright so this is having radius r and thickness is dr I can take a element of this solid solid sphere I can consider this solid sphere to be made up of this spherical shell I can take the element of this sphere in the form of a spherical shell of radius r and thickness dr so what would be the volume of this spherical shell d tau that is 4 pi r square dr and what's dm dm is m upon if I assume mass uniform distributed same upon 4 by 3 pi r cube into 4 pi r square dr so that will come as what 4 pi 4 pi will cancel out this is 3m by r cube r square dr right and this is spherical shell so the moment of inertia is 2 by 3 dm r square so it is 2 by 3 3 m by r cube r square dr into r square so 3 3 will cancel out and uh, what do we have we have 2 m by 
R Q R four D R. That's T I. So I is going to be what? Integral of T I. That is two M by R Q R four D R. J to capital R. And this will give you two by five M R square. That's the moment of inertia of solid sphere. See, wherever uh, in the question it is sphere, by default you assume it's solid sphere. If it is spherical shell, then you write it hollow sphere or spherical shell, right? So wherever it is, it is only sphere. By default, you take it as solid sphere. And many people, many people confuse between moment of inertia of solid sphere and moment of inertia of hollow sphere. See, don't need to confuse. See, the the moment of inertia is more if mass is far and far from the axis. See, moment of inertia is r square dm integral. See, if ma mass is far away from the axis, then moment of inertia is high. In a spherical shell, see, in solid sphere, you have lots of mass near the axis also. In a spherical shell, the, all the mass is on the periphery. So, of course, the spherical shell will have higher moment of inertia and solid sphere will have lower moment of inertia. Just keep in mind this thing, right? If mass is far from the axis, the moment of inertia is going to be high. In a spherical shell, mass is distributed on the surface. So, in that case, moment of inertia of spherical shell would always be higher than moment of inertia of a solid sphere, where the mass is near to the axis also, right? So, same mass m, the spherical shell will always have a higher moment of inertia. Okay? So, this is the moment of inertia of the famous bodies. And you wish to find moment of inertia about any other axis, you can use parallel axis theorem. You wish to find this, then it is just this is ICM. You have got ICM. This is R, which is D in fact. So you can find moment of inertia about this axis as ICM plus MD square, that is 2 by 5 MR square plus MR square, and that is 7 by 5 MR square. All right, 7 by 5. M R square. So this is I about this axis. So these are the moment of inertia of the famous bodies. I hope I have taken all the famous bodies. You just remember moment of inertia of the